Hello and welcome to another special edition of Culture Magazine here on I-24 News. Today on the show we will discuss 2013 in the world of food, fashion and art. Joining me in the studio to do that are Efrat Anzel, culinary journalist, Rotem Isaac, fashion editor at Time Out in Tel Aviv, and Michal Divon, our very own culture journalist. Now, what will all of you remember from your fields in 2013? Let's start with fashion. Okay, I just have to say, please don't judge me, but what I'm taking from 2013, and I know a lot of things happened, but Jennifer Lawrence, excuse me, <laughs> and we'll deal with that later. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> and and what, was, what was memorable in food this year? I think uh, Taizu, Michael, and Imperial, three places that changed the culinary scene in Israel. And Michal, Art? Well, based on the exhibitions which we'll talk about, and I'm not going to give it out right now, uh, pop culture and innovation reincarnate themselves in the art world, not Van Gogh. Well, we're excited to hear about that, but let's get started. Before we begin discussing 2013 culinary developments, two of Israel's most prominent young chefs who made significant breakthroughs this year joined forces for a colorful night of dishes. Shahar Pellet went on a special tasty mission to try out some unique and quite spicy food. Hungry? How about a Cantonese rice pasta? Or some Italian bacon with Chinese spices? The mixing of the Asian and Italian kitchens might sound strange to the common restaurant patron, but two young Israeli chefs felt they were up to the task of combining the two different worlds. They have a lot in common. When we studied and looked uh, a little bit uh, on the history of it, we saw that, you know, the, the noodles, uh, a lot of the cooking techniques, uh, some of the sauces are very similar. So we thought, OK, let, let's try to fuse the two together and see what comes. In an evening inspired by Marco Polo, the Italian merchant who traveled to China and came back with the ingredients for lasagna, chefs Yuval ben and David Frenkel decided to join forces. But don't let their young appearances fool you. We practiced for uh, more than 10 years, the both of us, so we're young, yeah, but we still have a lot of, uh, you know, we have a very long career behind us. I think uh, most successful chefs today in the world are quite young, I guess around our age. Reactions or expectations for this night specifically? Hey, um, actually, we must start, uh, otherwise, uh, no, no reaction, no expectations, I think. Let's see you in the kitchen for a bit. In the center of Tel Aviv lies Taizu, Yuval's Asia Terranian kitchen. After a year and a half of planning and a three-month trip to Southeast Asia with his sous chefs for research, the restaurant opened its doors with a unique culinary vision and design concept, borrowing themes from the five elements of ancient Chinese philosophy. We know today that cooking good food is not enough, so we had to create an amazing restaurant, a nice ambience, uh, the music, the, the plates, everything to make it happen this way. This is the pancetta, okay. but we stuffed it with uh, Sichuan pepper and glazed it with uh, Chinese spices. Yuval's encounter with David, who became a good friend and the chef of renowned Italian restaurant Pronto, led to a collaboration which hopefully won't be just a one-night stand. We both took a very uh, authentic kitchen and we gave him the, our own uh, interpretation. And we really want to like, see what this evening uh, going to bring us and how we're going to take it further. The special combination between East and West creates a very unique fusion. For example, this dish of ragu made out of rice noodles. Let's see what the fuss is all about. Yuval and uh, David are the best chef in Israel. Young, talent, very um, uh, precise, mature. So if you're wondering what the buzz is all about, it's the sense of Asia meets the heart of Rome. A considerable amount of hard work and research bringing to life a mixture of two DNAs into one culinary festival. Now, Efrat, you are a, the food expert. You had something to say about this report? Of course I have. I'm very surprised you didn't see me over there because I was there in that 
dinner. Uh, it was one of the best meals I've ever had, I think. Very interesting. And uh, the day after, I just uh, texted them, uh, both chefs, and told them, thank you for a very educating evening. And what were the, the top food trends of 2013, would you say? Wow. Uh, I think I'll begin with drinks, with uh, the cocktail train, trend, or maybe I should say the uh, cocktail crave. It began 10 years ago in London, in New, New York City, and then three years ago it exploded in uh, Australia and Paris and Amsterdam and Berlin. And this year, 2013, finally it arrived to Israel. Uh, we see many cocktail bars that were opened in Tel Aviv. I think the most important of them is uh, the Imperial Craft Cocktail Bar. We did have cocktail bars before, but uh, this year we finally understood that if you treat your drink as you treat your food, with a lot of respect to the ingredients, I mean uh, premium uh, alcohol brands and fresh fruits and uh, infusions and homemade syrups, then you get the perfect, perfect drink. There's definitely something to that. Now, um, what say, about veganism? I want to move on to veganism I, in Israel. You uh, want to go to veganism? I do. I'm sorry. We, <laughs> we really want to talk I, about this. I think um, there's one in the room. She's a vegetarian. Vegetarian. I'm vegetarian going on vegan. And I'm uh, the opposite. I'm a carnist and I believe in uh, <laughs> in eating uh, meat uh, yeah the the vegan uh, phenomena in Israel is unbelievable. Uh, it began two years ago with uh, the Gary Urofsky lecture that uh, came up uh, to YouTube. I watched it, she watched it, and I also watched you it. watched it. And also uh, a culinary journalist uh, named Orisha Witt. And she became vegan overnight and she opened a blog, uh, veganonstop.co.il, <laughs> and uh, no, very good one. And she said from the very first day, it's not a trend, it's going to stay, and she's right, because only last week uh, I've heard that uh, in Aroma, the biggest coffee chain in Israel, uh, there is a vegan menu. Uh, I think it's amazing. And it's, it's, it's only one of some um, big places in Israel that have now a vegan, vegan menus, and it, like, it really means that it's here to stay. It's not a trend, it's mm -hmm. not fashionable. It might have started as something like chic, let's check it out, but it's totally here. Yeah, I think because the reasons of becoming vegans, are, are, there are many reasons. It can be ecological, it can be uh, of, because of um, compassion to animals, and it can al also be about health. Many people think it's healthier to be vegan, what but you still think? you're against it. Uh, I studied medicine, and I believe that uh, people are carnists. Uh, originally, we have teeth that uh, belongs to animals. Oh, we're that still going to have a chick fight here. <laughs> and, 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 and I if believe it's the hour, if it's the right hour for like I always say chick that fight in the mud. Almost <laughs> every pregnant vegan woman needs uh, the supplementary of uh, B12 vitamin for. Uh, her for being a health. And I think it says that we cannot live without meat. Well, thank you for that. We have to move on to, to fashion now. Fashion! That's okay, easier. without me saying <laughs> anything, <laughs> with the vegetarian being quiet. Okay. <laughs> I'll drink something. It's not a cocktail. Okay. Cheers. So, as we said, we are moving on to fashion now. Who needs models? This past year, the presenter trend continued with singers and actors turning into fashion icons and faces of leading brands. Let's watch. All great fashion houses have a diva to represent them that the public can recognize at first glance, face, an icon, to help the credibility of a brand. Lately, popular brands of ready-to-wear fashion also want to have an icon on their billboards, and this season, they spared no expenses. Carol, a fashion brand with a joyful and comfortable image, employed the services of model and actress Sienna Miller. Love fashion? Sure, but don't be a victim. That's the message they're trying to convey by hiring a cool, independent young woman. Another famous model selling reasonably priced fashion is Australian Miranda Kerr. Famous for her modeling work with underwear brand Victoria's Secret, Kerr has also been the face of the Spanish Mango since 2012. Her personality fits well with the urban design and the brand image of the fashion house. Vero Moda also found the fashion icons to sell their affordable fall 2013 collection. British model Poppy de la Vigne, a fashionista that understands that the low-cost clothes can be appreciated by her fans. The trend also crossed the border to Israel, where the popular chain Fox got internationally renowned Barre Faeli to be their representative. The brands get prestigious and visibility, and the top models get in touch with their fan base, young and often on a budget. A deal that works for both sides and keeps everybody happy. 
Now, Autumn, I want to talk about Jennifer Lawrence. She was Miss Dior. She just seemed to really conquer the fashion world in 2013. Why do people love her so much? Why is she so special? I think that the reason that we are all obsessed with that hot, hot lady, <laughs> really. And I'm a very straight woman, but I should say that this, this girl is amazing. And I think it's all about her fabulous character because with all the respect you like uh, all the kind of out there celebrities that are in fashion like Lady Gaga who did Versace this year and Miley Cyrus and even Victoria Beckham she's like very refreshing and I think that she also gave us one of the best fashion moments this year when she tripped down the stairs while going to uh, <laughs> grab her award or her Academy Award she just fell with this amazing multi-layered very elegant uh, hot couture Dior dress and she looked like a modern day Cinderella. It was very Carrie Bradshaw of her. I yeah, watched absolutely. it and I said could this happen to anyone but Jennifer Lawrence? I mean she's so, she's kind of clumsy but she's so humble I think with all the um, talent that she has and her beauty and her I mean, I'm in love, you could see and that's... I, <laughs> you're you're clearly in love. about Miley Cyrus, because she wears nothing. Miley Cyrus, <laughs> Cyrus wears nothing, and that's another thing happening in that's fashion become this a new year. trend. Uh, I think it was it's always the trend, <laughs> but it's true. like uh, Miley Cyrus is really uh, something different, but I think Jennifer Lawrence is... Um, is completely different because she brings her personality uh, with all the respect to Miley Cyrus that has kind of a sassy uh, personality. But Jennifer Lawrence, um, as I said, she, she is um, Ralph Simmons, that he's the one that designed her uh, hot couture dress. He saw her as a muse this year and he made, he made her Miss Dior and I think she's doing it in a very humble way and that what, sure. that's what makes her perfect. And uh, I know Obviously, I would also love to talk about Jennifer Lawrence this entire time, but we, we must move on to more <laughs> subjects. Um, now, there's always kind of an old trend that comes back. What, what was the comeback of this year? Okay, so ladies, I'm sorry to tell you, but the 90s came back. I don't know what, oh, no. what you think about this time. This is bad news. But <laughs> it's totally here. Uh, it was all, all 2013 was, uh, th and 13 was about the 90s. And I think it's, uh, fashion usually looks two decades backwards, mainly because the fashion designers uh, of now, of our days, were children during that period of time, and they tend to worship their uh, childhood uh, idols and themes. So we could see uh, Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love kind of became the new fashion idols. The belly shirts came oh back, God. I'm very sorry, um, along with maybe some better things like uh, torn out jeans and flannel shirts and baby doll dresses and the famous, very clumsy Dr. Martens that, you know, when I was in, um, Unbelievable. I was a young girl I like, once and I had yeah, I, mean, I, too. I thought they'd never come back, really. As 90s, well, you know, they didn't. They became chic and that was really, really weird because I think they're horrific shoes, <laughs> but well, it's that's like just Uggs. me. Uggs are, used to be such a big thing and they're ugly. Thank God. Exactly. <laughs> we don't have them anymore. Yeah. Someone and has now, to say it. What do you predict will come back to haunt us? So next you're year. actually from asking me when I'll see in this year, 2014, I'll see a photo from 2013. I think I'll be very sorry for being kind of a fashion victim and wearing a slight high belly shirt. Unless you are Barifaeli. Well, I think even Bar Faeli, and I think we saw her last week uh, in the X Factor hosting with a belly shirt. She's perfect. This, this girl is really perfect without Photoshop, but I think that a belly shirt, it's a no-no. Girls, yes. don't Unless do it. you're a supermodel. Don't do it. Even when you're a supermodel, I think it's really, there are better things to wear. I agree. Well, we need to move on to art now with uh, Michal. What were the top exhibitions of 2013? Okay, well, as you know, there are so many things going on around the world, so we can't talk about everything, but I did see a trend of um, bringing back pop culture into the art world, you know, and so when you think about art, you'll obviously go to Van Gogh, uh, you know, the, the classical artist, but this year they did a 25-year um, exhibition for Andy Warhol, who... Andy Warhol celebrated marketing. You know, his art showed hamburgers and ketchup and, uh, you know, he did all these crazy things, but he's an icon. He's really one of the, the most, I mean, he, he's the one who coined the phrase 15 minutes of fame. And his exhibition called 15 Minutes Eternal Highlights was exhibited around the world, but there's a specific exhibit I'd like to, to touch upon in Shanghai. 
why is this this is the only place where they had to take out one part of his exhibition and you might be able to guess which part it's the paintings of Mao you know the great leader which for them uh -huh. was too controversial so they took this out and uh, apparently in the 70s um, he was asked Wall was asked to paint one of the great leaders maybe uh, or you know someone a very uh, um, like a consensus of our time like Albert Einstein and he shocked everyone by painting Mao with lipstick and kind of questioning his <laughs> sexuality so this is really showing pop culture the other exhibit I'd like to quickly touch upon is the rain room um, which is nothing you'd imagine it's really bringing innovation it's a hall that has rain falling everywhere, but there are sensors and you can walk underneath and the rain will never touch you. Well, thank you for that, Michal. Thank you all of you for joining us today. Thank and thank you for watching. I'm sure 2014 will be full of colors, textures, tastes, and style. And you can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and i24news.tv is our website. I'm Meredith Ross, in for Deg Grover for more news updates. Stay tuned for the coming news edition. Goodbye.